this one's going to be, we're going to have a topic today, and this topic's going to be, I guess, I'm going to call it gun owners, and your types of gun owners. I think a lot of it really comes down to some people cross it between a little bit, some people are very stereotypical in one area, and I think I'm going to touch base on this misconception of our country is so well armed that no country will ever invade us. Now, I can't remember the Japanese general's name, and he talked about how our country, everyone had a weapon like a blade of grass. Well, true. Well, I think the firearm, or firearm ownership is incredibly high. You have to understand that the majority of it belongs to, I'd say half, or less than half, and it's people who own more than one firearm. So yeah. So already you have a left, a polarized side. Now, if you break it down even further, how many people actually just own firearms? Okay, so that's a big group. They just own, they don't shoot them, they don't train, they don't own ammunition for it. That's another concept. So now you have a group, a big chunk taken away, and that pie, and you have the people who actually own firearms. And you take it away, from the people who, how should I put this? They just collect, I guess, call them collectors. And you take that away, so now you have even less. Now you take away the people who are pro hunters, sportsmen, I guess if you want to call them. Those, these type of people have a shotgun, a scope rifle, a lever action. They only buy one box or two boxes of ammunition a year. They put it on a shelf. They'll spend a box of ammo zeroing, they might see a deer, they shoot the deer, they shoot whatever, and then you know, they put it all away, they clean it, put it away, they don't do it again until next year. So, I mean, that's a big chunk, there's a lot of hunters. So, you take that group away, what does that leave you with? <coughs> that leaves you with maybe like the tactical crowd, and that leaves you with like the militia crowd, uh, I'm not call them sportsmen, I would call them three gun types and, you know, competition guys. Competition guys are going to have ammunition. Competition guys are going to have a couple rifles. They're going to have quite a bit invested into it. So, these guys, it's not going to fall under. You're going to, these guys are serious. But, I don't think the competition guys make up a big chunk of what a gun owner is out there. I think we're a small slice of that pie. The militia, the tactical crowd, I think they also make up a pretty small slice of that pie too. Now what I'm getting at is this. The problem is most people have, there's not a shortage of guns. I think it's a shortage of ammo. Ammo, magazines, zero rifles and training. You have a lot of misconceptions that people think that I'm going to be able to defend my house without no problem. Nope. Any country that invades, we got it. Red Dawn scenario. <coughs> if your rifle's not zeroed, and you don't know your rifle, you don't know where it's going to hit, it's useless. It's a stick that goes bang. It makes a loud noise, and maybe you would hit something. If you're not if you're not training, you're not taking your skills, and you're not sharpening it, you're basically a dull sword. You know maybe the gist of what you should do, but you're not sharp at it, you're not effective. You're kind of useless. I think, I think the gun owner community, or gun community, really needs to understand ammunition, because you look at it this way too. The 22 shortage came through, and we're still, still, and it's been four or five years, of 22s kind of coming back, certain areas have it, no big deal. Some areas still don't have it. No. That turnaround period. How many people do you know were bitchy and upset and yelling at people, calling them price gougers because someone was selling a brick and ammo for 40 bucks, 22. All upset, bent out of shape. Calling a price gouger, getting really mad. Saying, how am I supposed to trick my kids out and go shooting? Well, why didn't you have a box? You had a 22. Well, I just bought it, or I've had this 22, and I always shoot. I shoot, or if 
buy what I shoot. That's what it is. I buy what I shoot. Well, why wouldn't you stock up? Oh, because you're the one that called preppers paranoid. You're the one that called the militia groups paranoid. Paranoid freaks. Nothing's gonna happen. They're not here to take your guns away. Jeez, you know, I'm a Democrat, but I'm a gun owner. Not a philosophy. You're, we're not here to take your guns away. We want just a little bit of regulation. No, they managed to suck up all that 22. It, it just disappeared. It was a cheap, easy round to stock up on. And yeah, people did panic, but at the same time, damn right. It's a good, simple round. But nine mil was hard to find for a while. You couldn't find it in Walmart's anywhere. You could not get, you couldn't get anything. You couldn't get a lot of common calibers. I remember when green tip was supposed to be banned before they figured that out. It, it instantly, prices went up. The average gun owner does not have more than a few boxes of ammunition per gun, if that. The average gun owner probably doesn't even have their rifle zeroed very often. The hunter might from the previous year. What I'm getting at is this. If you don't have on hand a minimum of 500 rounds per gun, per caliber, or however you want to call it, per caliber, you're hurting, you know? Our goal as an American should be to be a marksman. Our forefathers were marksmen. And uh, not everybody fought, but the concept was there. And it's probably true as it was back then. But my belief is we have so much to protect, so much to have, that we should all be marksmen. And we should all have enough ammunition where if something does happen, you're not sitting there going, well, I have a very expensive stick and nothing to shoot down it. Or I broke my scope and I don't know why. Or I'm not hitting what I'm aiming at, you know? Philosophies should be, I go out at least once every six months. Practice, sharpen my skills. Does that mean you have to run and gun? No. I don't generally say paper target shooting and then shooting. I think it's dumb for the most part. But you know what? It's better than nothing. You know, get out there. Get your kids involved. Get them trained. A lot of people, a lot of kids don't even get to do it. Get your wife involved. Women love shooting. You know, it's a good date night thing. Spend the time, spend the money, learn your equipment, buy new equipment if you need to, fix your equipment, learn how to fix stuff. So I'm going to use that as my example of what I think is necessary. And some of the things that I think too, if you're in that hunter class and you think that the Democrats aren't going to come for your shotgun, they're not going to come for your scope rifle, you think I'm safe and I don't have that scary black rifle, or I'm not in a tactical shooting, then I'm okay. I got another thing for you. Your scope rifle will become a sniper rifle. The black guns are assault rifles now. Your scope rifle becomes a sniper rifle and they'll take scopes away. They'll take rifles away. They'll leave you with a shotgun. But then shotguns will be dangerous too because they're very dangerous and you can't be trusted to have them. The people that collect antiques, antique rifles and think that they're safe, you're not. I mean, eventually it gets down to that point where your black powder rifles are considered maybe what they want you to have. And then eventually that goes to government. <coughs> Once government gets involved, there's nothing that they won't take. You know, you give them an inch, they'll take a mile, and someone's going to have a problem with something. And we've watched history after year after year, we watched the history. We watch people erode everything we have has been eroded. I mean, look at the history of gun ownership and look at the history of how as a society we, how should I put it, just the gun laws that came into place. I mean, in the 30s, you could buy a Thompson self-machine gun. No, no questions asked, you could just buy it out of a magazine. Then they came up with all this NFA, you know, tax stuff. And $200 back in the 20s was like, or 30s, I should say, was a lot of money. Luckily, it hasn't been price adjusted, but it, for what? I think it's silly to think that 
you're going to be mowing people down. Well, you're not going to mow people down. You don't like jam. I don't like jail. So, I mean, you have that. You have basically what people refer to as a registration thing, which is not a registration. Yeah, a, a four, what is it? Oh man, four, seven, three? Can't even think of it. A four, four, seven, three? The, fo the form you fill out, which doesn't register your gun, but all it does is it checks the gun and it checks you against the database for criminal activity. You clear both, you get to go home with the gun kind of thing. I think people, you know, in the 60s that came out, I think after the JFK assassination, I mean, it's stupid. I mean, you could buy a gun out of the damn freaking magazine. I mean, why not? Why couldn't you? I don't know. I think we're watching history erode things. Hopefully with the current president, we can actually get some of that reappealed. They're talking about a suppressor act where you can actually now buy a suppressor, which is great. That is so cool. And uh, I think we're going to see things in the future where people now will be able to uh, enjoy things. You know, maybe, maybe with Trump, we're going to be able to have some things back where maybe the restrictions come down. And I doubt it. Once a tax in place, they usually never take it away because that's a f um, income, money income for them. So I guess maybe call this part one of two. Maybe I'll get part two out a little bit later. I'll see. Well, I gotta sign out.